Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. This week at work is all about backing up and restoring Windows Server Active Directory. In today's video, I'm talking about a situation where our environment is cratered, a meteor strike. Every domain controller in the enterprise is lost. We need a way to get it back. I'm a big fan of having a local system state backup of domain controllers at key data centers in the environment. This backup should be copied to a secure file share where we can always count on getting a recent copy. In my lab, we're keeping things simple for brevity. I have this one domain controller, Phoenix DC1, supporting the bbco.local domain. There is a member server named Phoenix FS1 that hosts a hidden share named AD Backups with a dollar sign on the end so people can't see it when they're browsing the network. The security on the share should be highly restricted. Only those who need to use it to recover Active Directory. You also have to consider that if Active Directory is down entirely, how will you access this system state backup? Cloud storage with a cloud to break glass account might be a good choice. We will be relying on the local administrator account on Phoenix FS1, again, for simplicity and the brevity of this video. With Active Directory down, we will still be able to access the data using this local credential. I highly recommend scripting your builds for domain controllers to ensure a consistent configuration of each one. When we go to recover this DC, we want to recreate storage volumes and drive letters to match the original server. Now, let's look at a scheduled task on this DC, Phoenix DC1. I would recommend a group managed service account here assigned to the domain controllers group. It should be a member of the backup operators group and make sure it has access to the secure file share as well. But we're using the domain admin account for simplicity and brevity here. This is running a simple script that deletes yesterday's backup, performs a new system state backup, then copies the backup to the secure share on Phoenix FS1. Here's where I ran into trouble. The scheduled task does not complete successfully and there is this CAPI2 event ID 513 error in the application log in the event viewer. If this happens to you, watch my video Fix System State Backup Error CAPI2 Event ID 513 right here on the Shotoku Tech channel. Okay, that's fixed and we have a good System State Backup. Now I turn off Phoenix DC1 and delete it from Hyper-V. Poof, AD is gone, destroyed. I've built this replacement machine. Obviously it's not domain joined. And I'm not going to bother renaming the machine in Windows, but I am curious how to manage assigning an IP address to it. We'll just leave it to DHCP from my router to assign it for now. Most important is to confirm that the volumes are formatted and the drive letters match up with the original domain controller that you're restoring. Now I'm going to access the secure file share on Phoenix FS1. Remember, there's no DNS anymore because there's no DCs. So I'm using the IP address of the file server. I'm logged into this new machine with the same local administrator username and password as the file server. Now I copy the Windows backup image folder that contains the backup of the original Phoenix DC1. Windows Server Backup looks for this Windows Backup Image folder, so you need to have this folder at the root of the drive you're copying it to. I'm copying it to the same E drive as it would be on the original Phoenix DC1. Sysvol and NTDS folders were on the F drive on the original domain controller. I'm going to say it again, standardize your configuration of the DCs and document all the details of the DCs that you intend to recover. This will take some time copying this file over, so we'll skip over watching the progress here. The file copy is completed now. 
we need to install the Active Directory Domain Services role, but we don't need to configure it. Also, install the Windows Server Backup feature. This will take some time, so we'll skip watching that progress too. Now that those are installed, we need to reboot into Active Directory Restore mode. Run msconfig. On the Boot tab, select Safe Mode with Active Directory Restore Mode selected as well. Apply this and reboot the server. Now we log into the new server running in Safe Mode. Open Windows Server Backup. Choose the backup stored on another location. Click Next. Choose Local Drives. Next. Select the backup location. Next. Select the server to recover. Phoenix DC1 in our case. Next. We only have this one date as an option to recover. Next. Select System State. Next. Now here, you want to select Restore to the Original Location, and this is where documenting your configuration is key. Also, select Perform Authoritative Restore of Active Directory Files. Next. You have this warning that the backup is from another server. Click OK. Another warning about replication? Not really a problem right now. Click OK. We want to reboot automatically once the recovery process completes. Click on Recover and another warning that this cannot be paused or canceled. Click on Yes. This will take some time. We'll peek in here and there to see the progress. Finally, we can log in. We come to this notice that the recovery succeeded and to exit safe mode. So we run msconfig again, and on the boot tab we unselect safe mode, apply this, and reboot. Here we see the server is rebooting. This can take some time as this is the only domain controller in the domain and you have to wait for it to time out trying to apply policies that it can't possibly access in this scenario. Finally, we can log in. The first thing I want to do is to set the IP address of the original domain controller on this new server. Use Server Manager Local Server Settings to do this. We enter these details here and click OK. We get this warning about a missing NIC having the same settings. Do we want to remove them from the missing one? Answer yes. Now we have to reconnect our remote session with the correct IP address. Run ipconfig register DNS to update the DNS records for the domain controller. Now we can look up the domain name bbco.local and see the correct IP address is resolved. Now let's check the netlogon and syswall shares. Oops, they're not available. Looking at this article, we need to use regedit to set this registry key sysvol ready to 1 under H key local machine, system, current control set, services, net logon parameters. Look for the link in the description below. Stop the net logon service. Start the net logon service. Now we can see the net logon and sysvol shares are available. BBCO local domain is back. Here are our computer accounts. Here are the user accounts. It's all back. Running GP update is a good test. We see this runs successfully. That's a good indication. Let's run DC Diag for good measure. Everything passes except system log, which makes sense considering what we just went through. Also, DFSR events fails, but again, this makes sense. And we just confirmed the sysvol share is present and GP update runs OK. Open the DNS manager and we can see our domain controller and file server records are there. Looks good. 
I'm going into Device Manager, Show Hidden Devices, and under Network Adapters, we see that Ghost NIC. Let's delete that. Okay, as far as disasters are concerned, this wasn't so bad. Make sure to document your environment, configurations, credentials used for access, and whatever else you think may be needed in this situation. And keep this in a safe place that you can access, even if everything's cratered. Leave a comment below about your worst disaster recovery stories. Give this video a like. And before you go on to watch more of my Windows Server Administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.